This is a story about a woman we'll call Mary Johnson. She's asked us not to use her real name because she's involved in a legal battle that will likely leave you shaking your head. Several years ago, Mary went to the doctor. She was billed $294 for the visit, but says she never got a bill and quickly forgot about the trip. That bill ended up at Medical Recovery Services, a debt collection company based in Idaho Falls. Attorneys Brian Smith and Brian Zollinger handle cases for the company. Fast forward to early last year. Mary works at Melaleuca and Medical Recovery Services sent a garnishment notice to her employer requesting nearly $1,000 for the $294 bill. The additional money was for interest and attorney's fees. But there was one problem. Melaleuca received a garnishment document that didn't match any name of an employee. And Melaleuca couldn't guess and potentially guess wrongly as to who the true judgment debtor was. The social security number on the garnishment was Mary's, but the last name did not match hers. According to legal documents, Melaleuca attorney Andrew Law called Medical Recovery Services on June 20th, then followed up with an email writing, I indicated that Melaleuca is willing to work with you and that Melaleuca doesn't believe it is necessary to take this dispute to the court. Melaleuca's proposal to Smith was simple. Send us a legal request called an interrogatory asking us to tell you the name of the employee with the social security number. But Smith refused, and one month later, he and Melaleuca attorneys went before Magistrate Judge Michelle Mallard. We're here today, Your Honor, because plaintiffs have not been careful in how they pursued their garnishment efforts in this case. Uh, first, plaintiff did not carefully ensure that its garnishment documents accurately named a Melaleuca employee. A Melaleuca invited plaintiff to propose a solution that is less burdensome than a notice and deposition, uh, deposition and a subpoena to produce documents. Uh, that solution could have consisted of a simple discovery request, but plaintiff chose not to take Melaleuca up on that invitation. What we have here, Your Honor, is a misunderstanding by Melaleuca, and it may be because they don't do this kind of work. I can understand that. Uh, few people do it. Um, they completely get the statutes wrong, and I'll show the court how that's the case. Um, I don't blame them. Um, I don't talk about their negligent work not doing it right. They just don't have statutes right. Uh, I don't know why they're making such a big deal out of this. Maybe it doesn't appear to them that their employee is the same person and that has been using their employer employee's social security number and they don't want their employee to be subjected to these actions of someone who may have already her identity. It's all rank speculation. We, we don't know, but we're going to get to the bottom of it. They got to the bottom of it. Judge Mallard ruled that Melaleuca's response to the garnishment was true and sufficient. She discharged the company of any liability and told Smith that he could ask Melaleuca to tell him the name of the employee something the wellness company had already offered to do. Court documents show Smith sent an interrogatory, learned the employee's name, garnished her wages, and obtained over $1,200, nearly $1,000 more than the original bill. So case is closed, right? Not so fast. Last month, Smith filed an application for award of supplemental attorney's fees. That's legal talk, meaning he wants someone to pay for the time he spent on Mary's case. The amount he wants, $5,583.25, nearly 20 times more than the original medical bill. And who does he think should pay those fees? Mary Johnson. Of course, we wanted to ask Brian Smith about this. He was too busy for an on-camera interview, but did speak with me on the phone. Why should she have to pay for that? It's real simple. Under the law, we get to ask the court for what's called post-judgment attorney's fees for the work we had to do after the judgment to satisfy the judgment. But it's not, so, her, it's not her fault. All of this was not her fault. I understand that, but it's not based on fault. But but but, okay. but is it right? But, but it is it, it is kind of her fault because she could have come in and made payments. She didn't do it. But she could have told the lawyers at Melaleuca, "Don't fight this guy because I don't want to have to pay anything." But but did she know? That's the question. Did she know that well, this was? Well, should have told her. Who should have told her? Well, but shouldn't Melaleuca attorney should have said that to her? Shouldn't, it, but if the name had been correct 100%, then it would have happened. I imagine they would have garnished her wages because then that that's would. That's correct. That's correct. Well, no, no, because, look, because Melaluca wouldn't have taken this position, but when it didn't match, Melaluca had a choice. Melaluca put up.
put up a huge fight. And the only reason this happened is because Andrew didn't go to her and say, look, this isn't worth the fight. You're going to have to pay it eventually anyway. So let's just go ahead and let him take the garnishment. That's what he should have done. So why didn't you just go to the employee and say, is this you? Debt collectors have a duty to ensure that they know the true identity of the debtor. Employers don't have that duty, and employers can't guess um, lest they expose themselves to potential liability and problems with the employee. Law says Melaleuca has responded to garnishment requests from medical recovery services in the past without any problems, and the company will continue to do so. Even though the judge ruled against Smith, he stands by his actions. Do you think that your firm did anything wrong in this case? Absolutely not. And Smith believes Mary should pay him over $5,500 for the time he says he spent on the case. Is there anything that Melaleuca plans to do to help this employee with this situation? Melaleuca believes that turning a few hundred dollar debt into more than $5,000 in attorney fees is simply unreasonable. And for that reason, Melaleuca has worked with um, the judgment debtor in this case to help her secure competent counsel. Uh, so she can defend herself. The next court hearing between Smith and the Melaleuca employee is April 22nd. We'll be there to let you know what happens. Now, this is just one of many, many cases that Medical Recovery Services has been involved in over the years. Tomorrow on EastIdahoNews.com, meet a man who was sued by the company over a mistake his doctor made. He fought all the way to the Supreme Court and won. I'm Nate Eaton, EastIdahoNews.com. So what they saw is that I owed $1,800, and they're by God going to get it. Jared Newmeyer lives in California, but it was in 2012 when he had a home in Idaho Falls that he went in for a colonoscopy. Well, I met all my deductibles for insurance. It was just basically paid for. Everything went well, but in May of 2013, Newmeyer and his wife returned home from a cruise to find an interesting notice in their mailbox. It's a pretty generic letter. It said, final notice, you're taking you to court, you owe us $1,800. Newmeyer says he took the letter to his doctor's office the next day to tell them they were being scammed. And then they looked me up and they said, well, actually, this is legitimate. Uh, this is from, oh, your uh, colonoscopy. The doctor's office never billed the insurance. Not only that, they put in their system that Newmeyer lived here on Skyline Drive, but he actually lived here on Skyview Drive. So they had a $900 bill they kept sending to somebody on Skyline Drive. There's actually no address here. I actually drove over on Skyline and said this, this number doesn't exist. And when Medical Recovery Services got it right, it was with the final notice telling Newmeyer to pay up. But he was on his cruise, and the letter sat in his mailbox for weeks. When I called the MRS and I said, fix this, they said, it's too late. We just filed court this morning. Newmeyer was shocked. He says he had perfect credit, always paid his bills on time, and had never been sent to collections in his life. The insurance company eventually processed the medical claim and paid for the procedure. The doctor wrote off the remaining $42 balance. So you had no bill. There was no bill. The $0 bill... That MRS wanted me to pay $400 for just to settle with them for all the work they I put them through because I didn't act quicker. Sounds crazy, right? That's what Newmeyer thought. So he hired an attorney and refused to pay medical recovery services a dime. And they said, fine then you're going to pay ours and yours and everybody else's, and so they pushed it. Newmeyer's lawsuit is one of thousands Medical Recovery Services has pursued over the years. A search of the i system shows the company filed over 5,600 suits from 2016 through 2018. Attorney Brian Smith tells EastIdahoNews.com that lawsuits are filed in less than 1% of all accounts Medical Recovery Services receives for collections. That means that MRS handled at least 560,000 accounts during that three-year period, and Newmeyer's was one of them. Smith said he couldn't meet with me for an on-camera interview, but we spoke on the phone. Why not just acknowledge, okay, yeah, your doctor made the mistake, you didn't make the mistake, and move on. Had we not sued Jared Newmeyer, the insurance company never would have paid. But instead of him going to the medical recovery, the quest agency on Monday, instead... He went to the doctor on Monday. He didn't go to medical recovery until Tuesday. And by Tuesday, the lawsuit had been filed. Smith
Smith admits this was a strange case, but argues none of it would have happened if Newmeyer had followed up with his doctor after the procedure years earlier. Let me ask you this, dude. Do you think he has any obligation to go to the doctor and say, look, I don't really ever get the bill from you guys? Or is he allowed to say, I haven't gotten the bill, it's like I don't have to pay that doctor? We had a, we had a baby in November. We've gotten probably eight or nine bills from having a baby from different doctors, this hospital. Right. It, it is, for an average person that doesn't deal with this every day, I can totally understand why he would would think it's, it's taken care of. Now listen to carefully what you're saying. Why, what basis in fact would he have to say? He never paid the bill and he never saw an EOB showing that it had been paid. So why, what is he relying on to say that was taken care of? Because nothing ever came to him in the mail. Maybe that's not a good legal response. Okay. Maybe well, that's you not. You never get anything in the mail, so you never see that it's paid for, and you never pay for it. Why is a person entitled to assume I don't have to worry about it as opposed to, gee, I never saw anything, I better go follow up? As time went on, Newmeyer's legal bills climbed higher and higher. And even though medical recovery services lost in magistrate court and then district court, the collection company kept appealing. That was extremely stressful to the point where I couldn't tell my wife what was going on. I just had to kind of not mention it, so she thought it had gone away. Finally, in March of 2018, more than five years after the colonoscopy, the Idaho Supreme Court ruled against medical recovery services and ordered the company to pay all of Newmeyer's attorney fees, which he says had reached nearly $30,000. There was a certain satisfaction fighting this and winning. The fact that they kept appealing was frustrating, that they wouldn't just give up. They wouldn't just say, yeah, we're wrong. Part of life and being human is admitting people make mistakes. Now, not all medical recovery services cases are like this. Tomorrow on EastIdahoNews.com, hear from people the company sued who say the experience wasn't bad. And then we try to figure out why Smith's fees are so massive and why he became offended when I asked him who owns medical recovery services. And you're the owner, right? I don't think that's an appropriate question to ask people what they own or how much they make or why they do what they do. I, I don't think that's I don't think that's proper journalism. I really don't. That and more this week on EastIdahoNews.com. I'm Nate Eaton reporting. I just think it's interesting that everybody's so up in arms that these people are such bad people. Bruce Herker yeah. has dealt with medical recovery services and says his experiences have been nothing but positive. They were very gracious to us. They, they, I mean, you know, they were very informative. His debt collection saga began years ago when he went to the doctor. Herker says he never got a bill and before he knew it, MRS was contacting him for payment. He went back to the doctor's office and a worker told him they had tried to resolve the bill but couldn't track him down. Nate, I've lived in the same house 23 years. I've had the same phone number in the phone book for 35. So medical recovery services took on the case. And while Herker admits dealing with any debt collection company isn't the best, I mean, he says you know, they're just doing their jobs. It, it, it's like if you were the weatherman on Channel 3 and you uh, called for fair skies and sunshine and it rained all day and ruined somebody else's stuff. Well, it's not his fault. He was doing his job the way it was supposed to be. Herker worked out a payment plan with MRS. So did David Lyon. He was also sued by Medical Recovery Services after he and his wife didn't pay a bill. They were nice, competent. There was no one screaming at me. Nobody was throwing center blocks through my windows or threatening to take me to jail. Lyon has MS. His wife has battled a brain tumor. They were going through major challenges when he says attorney Brian Smith gave him the chance of a lifetime. Brian gave me a job when, I'm telling you, I don't think any, he probably shouldn't have, but he worked with me. He was more than happy to help me when I needed it. Treated me very fairly. Can't see enough good things about him as an employee. Lyon says Smith hired him for a job at Medical Recovery Services, which is right next door to Smith's law firm, where Brian Zollinger is also an attorney. Because Zollinger and Smith do so much work for MRS, many debtors have wondered if they actually own the collection company. I tried to ask Smith during a phone interview. And you're the owner, right? I don't think that's an appropriate question to ask people what they own or how much they make or why they do what they do. I, I don't think that's I don't think that's proper journalism. I really don't. It doesn't to, make any difference. To, to ask if you own uh, the it doesn't make any difference. That's not a pr an appropriate question. I mean, what, the businesses that I own in town are my business. I'm 
Whoever owns medical recovery services makes money on fees and interest the company charges on cases they have. When Brian Zollinger or Brian Smith take a medical recovery case, they also make money on the fees they charge. If Smith and Zollinger own part or all of medical recovery services, they could potentially be making money on both ends. Medical Recovery Services filed as a limited liability company with the Idaho Secretary of State in 2001. Dell Thompson, Brian Smith, and Goldburn Investment Family were listed as managers. In a form filed later, Ned Zollinger was added, but his position was not specified. In a 2016 amendment to the LLC, Brian Zollinger and Taylor Lugo were added as managers. Those same names are stated on a 2018 Secretary of State annual report. I do love my job. When Smith ran against Congressman Mike Simpson in 2014, this campaign disclosure form shows he declared himself a partner in medical recovery services and checked that he made between $100,000 and $1 million the preceding year. The conditions of how medical recovery services acquires debt from doctors is unclear. Many collection companies purchase the debt for pennies on the dollar. Other doctors keep the debt and share a portion of that which is collected with the collector. All of this is completely legal. Again, Smith did not want to talk about specifics of the company other than why it was created. Look, all I'm doing is providing a service as an attorney to medical recovery who provides a service to doctors. Uh, and what you're also seeing is, is that, that the whole medical industry has changed in the last 20 years because people now feel that health care is a right. They shouldn't have to pay for it. Medical providers should be paid for their services, and Medical Recovery Services works to make sure that happens. Although Herker wishes doctors would be more involved in billing before utilizing collection companies. Have a person on staff, and I know that's, there you are, there's another expense, you know, for the medical people, but have somebody on, your office manager or somebody, really trying to find someone. The thing that appears to set medical recovery services apart from other debt collection companies in town is something called post-judgment or supplemental fees. You've probably never heard those terms. Tomorrow on EastIdahoNews.com we'll explain plus what you should do if you have medical debt and meet a doctor who pulled his business from medical recovery services. I was concerned that they did not have the kind of approach to collection that um, I wanted my patients being subjected to. I'm Nate Eaton reporting. Let me tell you about a local school bus driver who made around $500 a month and cared for her disabled husband. A few years ago, her husband went to the hospital and was billed $518. She couldn't pay the bill and was sued by Medical Recovery Services. She didn't show up for court and was ordered to pay $1,170. MRS tried to garnish her wages, but she legally didn't make enough money for that to happen, so she agreed to pay $10 a month. About a year later, the bus driver contacted MRS, asked what the payoff would be, and was told $1,224. She went in, paid the money, and thought the case was closed. But six days later, Medical Recovery Services asked for supplemental attorney fees of $843. That included $114 for the receipt and processing of the bus driver's $10 payments. A magistrate judge denied MRS's requests, saying the bus driver had been told what the payoff amount would be and that she was not informed about the supplemental fees. MRS appealed, but the district court agreed with the magistrate court. However, the Idaho Supreme Court overturned the decision and said under the law, medical recovery services is owed those supplemental attorney fees. So what are these fees? How are they decided? And if you have medical debt, can you avoid them? It's very expensive to be a judgment debtor. Ryan Farnsworth is a bankruptcy attorney. Most of his clients have medical debt. And here's the number one thing you should know. It's really not a great idea to ignore a lawsuit when you're served. When you go to the doctor, you generally get an explanation of benefits or a bill following the visit. 
If you don't pay, the medical office may try to collect on the bill for a few months, and then it could be turned over to a collection company like Medical Recovery Services. Collections will try to get the money from the debtor. If they don't respond, they'll likely get sued. They have 21 days to respond. If they don't file a response, then the, the complaining party, the, the plaintiff, uh, can get a judgment on that 22nd day, they go to the court and say they didn't answer, so give us a judgment against them. That judgment is called default judgment, and it means you're liable for that debt. It's a final judgment that cannot be appealed. Michael Satz is a law professor at the University of Idaho and has practiced bankruptcy and consumer finance law in Texas. What percentage of the cases would you say that people in medical debt end up with a default judgment? Oh, almost all of them. Uh, I, I, it's it's, it's got to be something like 90% of them. Once that happens, you owe the medical debt, attorney fees, and potential interest. And the collection costs, uh, that could just continue on and, and really keep going. The debtor can work out a payment plan, or the debt collection company could garnish up to 25% of the person's disposable income under certain circumstances. If you're not making that much money, you can't be garnished. Let's say you make the payments or your wages are garnished. You finally pay off the original debt interest and attorney fees and like the bus driver you may think the case is closed but this is where supplemental attorney fees come in fees an attorney can ask a judge for on behalf of the time and effort they put into your case since the original fee was set if they tell the court they were looking for you for 10 years and spent $1,000 a year, they can have another $10,000 judgment against you. This is where it appears Medical Recovery Services is drastically different than other medical debt collection companies in Bonneville County. EastIdahoNews.com spent weeks going through cases involving MRS, Bonneville Collections, and Action Collection Services. We went through hundreds of cases from these different companies looking for times when they went after supplemental attorney's fees. I only found one case. That doesn't mean there aren't other cases, it's just within a one year period, I only found one. Whereas when we searched through medical recovery services cases, found dozens right off the bat. And in those cases, the supplemental attorney fees MRS requested were almost always more than the fees on the original debt. We pulled 12 random cases and found the average original fee to be $826. The supplemental attorney fees averaged out to nearly $1,300. But on average, MRS was only awarded $804 by a judge. Some judges are blunt in their assessment of MRS. In a 2013 case that went before the Idaho Court of Appeals last year, a woman was charged a fee each time she made a payment on her debt. Caribou County Magistrate Judge David Kress called the process a scheme very troubling and stated the case was absurd, inequitable, and a bad example of collection work. I asked MRS attorney Brian Smith about the fees. How do you determine your fees? I take the time that I spent working on the case, the research that I did, you submit that to the court and then the court gets to determine what is a reasonable attorney's fee. In a follow-up email, Smith wrote, supplemental attorney's fees are necessary. Otherwise, people who have judgments against them could simply engage in evasive behavior designed to make collection of the judgment very difficult and cost prohibitive. Awarding supplemental attorney's fees encourages judgment debtors to cooperate with paying the judgment rather than making it more difficult to collect. As Smith mentioned, he doesn't decide how much he ultimately gets. That's up to a judge. Do you think the general public is aware of these supplemental attorney fees? Oh, no. The general public's not even aware of the whole court process, right? That's why you have so many default judgments. And frankly, the consumer laws, they are stacked in favor of the creditors. And yes. if things were to change, it's its not the attorneys or the judges that are going to change it. It's, it's going to be the legislators. Yeah, it would have to be legislators. From a, a principled standpoint. And speaking of legislators, one lawmaker serving from Eastern Idaho is Brian Zollinger, a medical recovery services attorney. Zollinger and Smith strongly opposed Medicaid expansion, which passed in Idaho last November. But I couldn't help but wonder, knowing that they were in the medical debt collections business, if that might have some influence on their thinking. Carrie Scheid and her husband, Jerry, believe Medicaid expansion will impact medical recovery services because some of the 60,000 low-income Idahoans who can't afford health care as they are caught in the Medicaid gap will now receive it. 
In a March 12th column, the Shides wrote in the Post Register that Representative Zollinger should publicly declare a conflict of interest when discussing Medicaid issues and bills. The very people that would benefit the most from Medicaid expansion were often the very kind of people that would end up uh, in their lawsuits. Zollinger did not respond to our requests for comment, but I asked Smith his thoughts. Do you believe that he should declare it? Um, I have no, I have, I have no involvement in that. You have to ask Zollinger that. Medicaid expansion, how would that impact medical recovery services? Um, it does not impact medical recovery services. Could it in the future? No. So there's, there's people who collect that, and uh, Medicaid expansion doesn't really affect that at all. Zollinger and his opposition to Medicaid expansion got the attention of critical care right doctor now. Kenneth Krell. He admits he may have his own conflict of interest, but wants more patients to have affordable health care so they don't end up in collections or lawsuits. I, I may get paid more if, if more patients have Medicaid, than if they have no coverage and I can't collect anything. That's absolutely true. But I think that the, the conflict of interest of making your living re recovering bills from patients uh, and thus having an interest in them not having Medicaid coverage is, is a fairly glaring conflict. Krell admits this is personal. He realized his office was using medical recovery services and thought he had to be notified if a patient was taken to court. But that's not the case, so he dropped the company. I was concerned that they did not have the kind of approach to collection that um, I wanted my patients being subjected to. I, I suspect that a lot of doctors are not at all aware of how the collection process works through their offices and thus are not aware of who they use. Maybe now the doctors will find out and if you have medical debt you'll know what to do and what your options are. Now, over the past week, EastIdahoNews.com has received countless emails, messages, and phone calls from people dealing with medical debt. Many are worried about speaking out in fear of being sued. Doctors and lawyers have contacted us asking to remain anonymous, but giving us new leads to look into. We will continue to follow this story, and if you have something you'd like us to investigate, email news at EastIdahoNews.com. I'm Nate Eaton reporting.